Welcome to the VoiceWare by PhoneSuite Browser Console training video. In this video, we're going to look at the PhoneSuite Browser Console and how to perform common functions such as setting up a wake-up call um, or changing a guest name, changing calling permissions, things of that nature. To begin with, you're going to want to double-click on the icon that's left on your desktop by the PhoneSuite installer. That is going to launch this page and you're going to be it prompted for your username and password, both, again, provided by the phone suite installer. The third thing is the extension number. And you want to enter the extension number of the phone that's closest to where you're logging in. So for example, if you're logging in at the front desk and the phone physically closest to you is extension 301, you'll enter that here. Next, go ahead and click login. This is the main browser console page. So you'll see that we are currently on the Rooms tab. There are many other tabs here that we'll look at, and we have a few buttons across the top. The most important thing to remember is that after you log in, you can always click the Help button at the top, and that will load a new tab with a PDF document explaining all of the features of the browser console. So you can review this as needed or print this out and have it next to you uh, for reference. The main screen again here is the Rooms tab, and it's going to show a listing of all our rooms, along with any guests that happen to be checked in. The first thing that I'm going to show you is how to set a wake-up call. So when we're setting up a wake-up call, the first thing we want to do is find the correct guest, and we can do that in a couple of different ways. If we want, we can scroll through the list of available rooms by using the blue arrows here at the top. Or, probably a little bit easier, we can search for either the guest name or room number in the search field. So for example, I can search for room 103, or I can search for any part of the guest's first or last name. Once we found our guest, the next thing we're going to do is click the wake up call icon here. What that's going to do when we click on it, it's going to take us to the guest details tab and the wake up call sub tab. From here, I'll select new wake up call. And I have a couple of options. If I want a one time only call for one of these times, I can simply click the button and I'm done we have a 6 a.m. wake-up call set up. If I would like a call for a different time, you can use the options down here. So for example, I could set a 5.25 p.m. wake-up call. And I then also have the options to set this call up for one time only, every day, every weekday, or every weekend. So I'll set it for daily here, and then click Save. A guest can have up to nine wake-up calls set. If you make a mistake on the wake-up calls, you can simply click the X to delete it and start again. Once a wake-up call is set, if we go back to the Rooms page, we'll notice that the icon has changed and will show us the time that the next wake-up call is scheduled. If a guest uh, receives their wake-up call and does not answer it, the icon will show that there's a wake-up call set, but a red explanation point next to it, showing that this guest has missed a wake-up call. If a guest successfully answers their wake-up call, the icon will show a green check mark, showing that the guest had a wake-up call and answered it. The next thing we're going to look at is guest calling permissions. And these can be set in one of two locations. The easiest is right here on the main page. So for example, if I want to change this guest calling permissions, I can simply click this button here and then select the appropriate calling permissions. For example, room to room. Notice that after I select it, the icon will change. I also have the option, if I select the button here uh, for the room number, it will take me again to the details page and then the PMS or property information page. 
I have a button here, which will allow me to also change the guest calling permission. While we're on this page, there are a few other things that we can do here. We can, as needed, change the guest name. Usually if the guest name is wrong, it's probably best to change it in the PMS system, and then that information will uh, be pushed to the phone system, but it can be changed here if needed. Uh, if your hotel allows you to give a guest a specific DID, which is a direct inward dial phone number, you can select that here. Uh, this is not a common option and normally will not be used. We have the button here, which is voicemail. If configured by your phone suite installer, you have the option of pre-canned voicemail messages that you can drop directly into the guest's voicemail box without calling the guest and leaving the message yourself. This can be used to um, drop in messages that are commonly used or commonly um, recorded to the guest manually. So if your hotel <clears throat> commonly has a uh, welcome message or you have a package waiting at the front desk or checkout instructions, those can be set up and pre-recorded. Once selected, that message will be dropped into the guest voicemail box. We also have the message waiting lamp. By clicking this button, it'll turn the guest message waiting light on. If you need to turn it off, you can simply select the button again. It'll turn it off. Next, we have Do Not Disturb. This button right now shows that Do Not Disturb is off, which means you can call the guest. If you click the button, Do Not Disturb is on, which means you cannot call the guest. This will not interrupt wake-up calls. So even if the guest is in Do Not Disturb, wake-up calls will still get through. We also have information down here regarding the guest language, calling permissions, how many voicemails they have, their VIP status, and <clears throat> any types of uh, calling that they've done while they've been checked in and a guest. The last button up here, you have the check in or out button. This is also not commonly used. You will usually check a guest in or out through the property management system, and that information will get pushed over to the phone system. The other tabs here, we have the wake up call tab, which we saw before. This is where we would go to set a wake up call. We have the call details tab. This will show a listing of all the calls this guest has made while they've been a guest. It will show billable and non-billable calls. So for example, if the guest called down to the operator three times, it would show that information here. We also have a get PDF button, which will allow you to get a PDF report of the data shown here, if any. We also have the wake ups call history. This is a tab showing all of the wake up call history for this guest. In this example, there's quite a bit of wake up call history. You normally won't see quite this much, but this is a great way to see if a wake up call was set up, if it was canceled, if it was answered, etc. So you can see here that we had a wake up call set up. Uh, that the call attempted and that the result was answered, meaning the guest picked up the phone and answered the call. We can also see that there have been wake-up calls set up by the user Aaron, uh, by another front desk user, and wake-up calls set up from the guest room phone directly and from an admin phone. Active no means that the call was canceled. Active yes means the call was or the wake-up call was set up. And again, you have a Git PDF, which will allow you to export this data into a simple PDF form that then can be printed out, included in the guest folio if needed. Back to our rooms page, you'll notice that we have two other buttons here, call and transfer. If you needed to call the guest in room 103, one option is to simply click the call button. What that will do is that will ring the phone that you paired when you were logging into the browser console. Recall that when you logged in, it asked you for the extension of the phone nearest to you. That's so when you click this call button, it'll ring that phone. So what it'll do, you click call, it'll ring your admin phone first, 
allow you to pick up that phone so you're ready to talk to the guest. As soon as you pick up the phone, then the guest room phone, in this case room 103, will begin to ring. If you are on a call, let's say you receive a call from the outside and they'd like to speak to the guest in room 103, you can click this transfer button, which will light up. And doing that will immediately transfer the call to the guest. It will not allow you to speak to the guest first. It will simply transfer the call. So make sure you absolutely want that outside user to be able to speak to the guest before you click that button. We have a few other tabs here at the top. We have the calls tab. This is a tab showing a listing of all the active guest room calls that are happening in the hotel at any one time. We have the extensions tab. This is a tab showing all the admin extensions in the hotel along with any non-guest rooms. So for example, we have the lobby, kitchen, uh, lobby two phone, and some admin users. We also have the same call and transfer buttons over here. So if you receive a call from the outside world and they'd like to speak to James, you can simply click the transfer button here and the call will be transferred to James. If you need to call James, you can click the call button here and that will perform the same operation as it uh, did before. So it'll begin ringing your phone. Once you pick up the handset to begin the call, it'll begin ringing James's phone extension 301 in this case. We have the details tab here, which we looked at before. And we also have the missed wake ups call tab. This will show a listing of all the missed wake up calls that happened for the entire hotel for the last 24 hours. This tab will start to blink and gets a notification if a guest misses their call while you're on the rooms tab. Say, notice that you should go to the missed wake ups call tab and see which guest missed their wake up call and then perform whatever actions the hotel requires. Along the top, we have a few more buttons. We have the group wake up. This button may not always appear. So if you're logged into the browser console and do not see the group wake up button, that's okay. There are some instances where it will not display. The group wake up is for setting a wake up call for people by affiliation. If there is no guest in your hotel that has an affiliation code associated with them, something akin to a group code, uh, then this button won't appear. But if I would like to, uh, if I have an affiliation here, say the wedding party, I can set a wake up call for everyone in that party just by using this button here. It saves you the trouble of going through uh, guests one at a time to try to find the people who are in that correct party and setting up the wake up call manually. The group message button is the one you should be the most careful with. This will allow you to drop in a message into either uh, guests by affiliation or for all guests in the hotel. So if you were to misclick in here and say drop in a you have a package waiting at the front desk for all guests, once you click send, that message is sent. There is no ability to undo it at that point. So please be careful with this button. If you are logging into the browser console and enter the wrong extension or didn't enter one at all, you can simply go up here and change the extension that your browser console is paired to. Up here, we have the day or night modes. So in this case, the system is in day mode now. We can see that from the button. If I change the system into, for example, night mode one, you'll see the button will change to night mode one. These night modes may not be used in all properties, so they may not do anything. You'll want to consult your management for details on which night modes are being used and what they'll do. The button here called Get Call Logs. This is a way to generate three different types of reports. You can generate an admin call log, a guest call log, or a wake up audit. And you can do so generally for any period of time up to 30 days ago. So for example, I could do it for just the six, or I could do it for um, the 29th through the 7th, for example. 
and any of these reports is going to generate just a simple PDF showing all of the activity for either admin calls, guest room calls, or wake up call audits for the given time frame. Lastly, we have the help button up here, which we saw before. This is going to display the PDF showing all the information we've just gone over. And then we have the log out button up here, which will log you out of this current session of the browser console. We hope you've enjoyed this browser console training video. If you have any questions, please direct those to your management. And as needed, they can contact your phone suite installer or phone suite technical support for additional information. Thank you for watching.